So anyway, uh, saxophones, uh, these are ballpark. When they come in, we'll set, set everything. They're all in Omni. Just Actually, happen to like the way uh, to Omni. the mic sounds in Omni. And so, and I'm not worried about leakage coming in. If anything does leak in, there's such great sounding mics that the leakage sounds great. So it makes him th sound even bigger. Studio A is a beautiful room, which was uh, renovated in 1988-89. I started in 1990, and this was my brand new room to book when I first started. And it's just the famous room everybody knows, you know, Sinatra, Dean Martin, Nat King Cole, and everybody f up from James Taylor, Barbra Streisand, Diana Krall, John Mayer. Everybody's been through here. These are the copy of the RCA 10001, um, where um, we're trying them on, uh, on the rooms. Uh, we haven't used them before, so we just kind of give them a shot. Andrew has the original RCA 10001 that he brought, and we're going to maybe AB if we have some time a little later. We'll have time to do something, because I really want to, the, the original mic of this was one of my favorite microphones when I worked for RCA and did, was doing all the Mancini recordings and all. And when the trombone players play, they always like this on the left, to the left. Trumpet players like their mic to the right. So when you're setting up for anybody in front, that's, Usually the way I like it. Trumpets uh, all in Omni. Uh, we put a 10 dB pad in. Is it 10 we have in there, Steve? Uh, they're either 10. Some of ours are 14. So I don't right. remember which. That's pretty yeah. much it. You know, it's just it's this just not rocket science. It's you know putting microphones up, putting good microphones up, getting a balance in a good room and. You, you got a nice project. Yeah. When we yeah, find out about a project, nice. Al and I'll sit down. Um, we'll get the instrumentation from the contractor, or the arranger, or the artist, whoever it is, so we know what's coming. Um, we'll talk to them and find out kind of what vein the music's going to be in. Is it going to be ballady type stuff? Is it going to be real hard swinging, big band? Um, are, are we going to be adding anything to it later? Is there going to be a vocal on it? So we find all that information out well in advance. And then we can sit down, and the two of us sit down and draw it on a sheet of paper, how we're going to want the room to look, um, if we're going to want to use anything different than we normally use, if, if we have, you know, if, okay, they want this one to sound more old-timey, so we might pull out some different microphones, or they want this one to be really punchy and in your face, so we might put the mics in a different place. And usually we like to have all that done about an hour before a downbeat, so that if we're sitting around drinking coffee, schmoozing with the guys while they're coming in the room, it's a good day for us. When we start a session, everything has been checked out and working. Uh, and, you know, Steve and I don't even, we don't even talk to one another um, anymore. On I mean, it's almost like instinctively, he knows what I want, I know what, what's meant to make his job easier. And we've become really close friends on top of the fact that we work together all the time and we spend more time together than we do with our wives. Sitting back there is an acoustic guitar and if he has an amp on something, the, the amp will go in a little room behind him. This little booth is for the um, vocals or there's a trombone solo that uh, Chris wants to have separated, so we'll put him in there. Drum in that booth, and it's that's yeah. a sleeve that we. Uh, I was doing a lot of Diana Krall recordings, and uh, she sings softly, and and sometimes plays a little louder than she sings. So it was always a problem trying to get that separation. So we came up with this sleeve, and it was made somewhere in Oregon, I think, and it fits over the piano and goes down and uh, it's got a couple of holes to be able to put the microphones in and uh, and it separates the uh, vocalist from the piano and the piano from the vocalist. Somewhat, not totally. 
it, in there, those are two M149s on the piano. 149s? Uh, yeah, M149s. And the same with the bass. There are two M149s on the bass. I use one on the uh, one on the FO, and then one up about like this by the fingerboard. All in cardioid. All in cardioid. Yeah. If you want to go in and look, you can see what mics are on the drums. I think it's the D112, the new D112, whatever. It's on the kick. Uh, there's a 57 under the snare, and that'll be out of phase. Uh, there's a 450, 452 on the snare, uh, 414s on the toms, uh, 452 on the hi hat, and then the C12s on the overheads. Um, we have um, over the conductor the uh, the Royer stereo. That's the two. Yeah. It's a stereo V. I, I don't think that, there's any of those. That's really that a beauty. I was thinking, we, we Steve. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking of maybe bringing him up. Okay. Uh, maybe the up, conductor. Yeah, up to here, and then and then would bring that up. So again, we haven't really. You so say you're gonna have to watch. We that. set this up last night. The guy, our guys, always set up the rooms. Al comes in in the morning and pushes stuff around where he wants it. We haven't done that today, so we're doing it now. <laughs> so. Talk back. It's just oh, conductor talk. For the back. conductor. And acoustically with the room, is this just where you always would start? Pretty much. The yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah. Usually, I like the wood side, you know, it's better. Sometimes, you know, depending on, you know, we'll have that area dead and we may have some percussion down there and, um, and we're getting a lot of leakage in it, so if we, we open it up, it deadens it the sound a little bit. And do you ever put anything on the floor? Or do you always uh, it depends on what it is, but rarely uh, do I put anything on the floor. I'm a microphone freak, so I'm always trying different microphones on stuff. Hey, but I'll, since I'm going to go inside okay. and get ready to click. But since before the band uh, gets here. you know we're doing this <laughs> class, I wanted to make sure that it was everything was the way we normally do it. You know? Full house today. Yeah. <laughs> well, what? You just turned that on, correct? Shut up. Great. <laughs> You know, when I worked at RCA, I did, one day I had Ike and Tina Turner in the morning. And I did the, the, the uh, I get some blue and uh, a couple of things with them. Then in the afternoon, I was doing Piatigorsky. And then that, that night I was doing Henry Mancini at eight o'clock, all in the same day. The next day, I'd be doing uh, Bobby Bear country record. Then I'd do something with uh, Gogi Grant, who was uh, an uh, girl singer with a big band and I would do uh, Billy May and Billy Eckstein at night you know it was that's and it was that way six days a week so those were really a lot of fun because the record was done you know you you do the record we always did four songs in three hours uh, and that was it no remixing yeah Instant gratification. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. It was great. Right. It cost me a few divorces because right. of <laughs> the hours I work. But other than that, I don't do that anymore. Now I start early and I leave early. You know, if I start mixing, I usually start around ten thirty, eleven. By six thirty, seven o'clock, I'm gone. Yeah.